Oh, hello. So we've been doing a lot more intermediate or advanced looks lately, and I wanted to take it back down a notch this week to some of the foundational ideas. Like anything, it takes a lot of time and skill to master something, but just because you're not a master doesn't mean that you can't make something that is great or seemingly elaborate. For this video, I just decided to play around freely with paint as a way to share some of the things I found are helpful to experiment with when you're learning how to body paint. This is all about encouragement and problem-solving skills for the self-taught makeup artist. First thing you should know is you do not necessarily need to be amazing at freehand drawing to be a body painter. Some of the best body painters might just be amazingly creative or bomb with really simple stencils and an airbrush. Being able to draw well certainly makes it a lot easier and I would still recommend everyone spends time on that as well, but I don't think that you can't start body paint before you've learned how to draw well. So my first tip if that's the boat you're in is to use reference pictures while you body paint. You can pick a real picture, another drawing, anything that you can visually study as you paint. I'm picking something very easy for this example to show you that if you can draw a line at a time, you can still make something cool. But as you keep practicing, obviously you should challenge yourself to move on to more complex shapes and objects. Alex Pardee is my favorite artist ever, so I'm using a mix of these two pictures specifically and his overall style as my inspiration. You can apply these tips though to any look you want with any colors, not just this one specifically. Okay, that was a long intro. So as you've seen, I'm starting off by just laying down a base of a bunch of colors. I like the face on this guy, so line-wise I'll be referencing that, but I like the colors and textures in this one, so I'm incorporating that as well. I'm using all water-activated paints for this, but you could use alcohol-activated paints too. I know that sometimes Alex Pardee starts with just a base of color like this, so I'm kind of working off of that idea right now. Once I have a base laid down, I start to very roughly mark out where my major lines are going to go. In this case, that's just a lot of wrinkles. I need to add the proper light and dark colors depending on where the lines are going to end up being, which is why I'm mapping it out first. You don't have to map it out this dark, you could use white or a gray or a thin eyeliner, but I just went for the dark. I left my brows on at first because I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing with them, but I don't think we're going to be needing these anymore. If you want to get rid of your brows, you can always block them out first, or you can do the white over the eyebrow trick, or you can just embrace them. Embrace your dark brows, make them part of the look, figure it out. Another reason to start with something like a pre-existing drawing like this is its abstract kind of cartoony nature gives you some leeway in experimenting as you get comfortable with drawing. If you're not going for complete photorealism, you can find your own style that doesn't need to follow a set of rules. Some of the best art is extremely accurate photorealism and some of it is completely unbounded creativity and neither is better than the other. I stopped to add white where the teeth would go before I did my rough outline of the teeth just to make it easier because sometimes filling in white near black can get a little messy. But the nice thing about water activated paints is you can pretty much put any color on top of any other color as long as you wait for them to dry in between layers. If you use cream paints, you won't be able to do this and you'll have a hell of a time keeping it off of everything that you touch, wear, or pretty much look at. Then I start filling in the colors to complement the outline. You can see from the reference drawing that Alex Pardee uses darker colors under the cheekbones to give it a sunken feel and lighter colors in areas that are meant to appear raised. This is also where using a reference picture is really helpful when you're teaching yourself because it helps you learn placement, shape, and movement using both colors and lines to complete your look. Eventually your mind will know how to piece this together without a reference picture. I love Pardee's work because even though there's still obvious rules that he follows like using the light and dark colors to show depth. He also experiments with colors where he wants to, to make an overall fun image. Feel free to play with this when you're first learning because, again, you might find your own style this way. Quick tip, if you get the eyelid crease issue with your paints, slap some shadow up in there. Now I'm using black shadow on pretty much every surrounding edge of my lines. This is to follow the reference picture and to make the overall look more dimensional. Flat lines are great for straight pop art looks or if the look calls for that, but shadows are a nice way to combine pop art with something that gives a little more for the eye to look at. And it's a nice easy way to start getting used to the idea of shading and shadows. Anything sunken inward would have a shadow around some part of the inside, depending on where you're pretending your light source is. For this look, I'm just following the reference picture, but a good way to learn where to shade and highlight, depending on your light source, for when you're not using a reference picture, is to take any 3D object, sit it in one place, and then move a light source around it in all different directions. 
Pay attention to how the shadows change and where the highlights change. In theory, when you're working your way towards more realistic body paint, you're going to want to mentally decide where your light source is, stick with that, and then consistently make your shadows and highlights upon that. This is nothing new. This is how people have been learning how to draw shadows and highlights for a very long time. But nonetheless, it is a very easy way to learn. If you're not sure right now, just start experimenting along the edges of your outline and get a feel for what illusion it creates to the eye. I'm using straight white paint to place my highlights based on where they are in my reference pictures. Or another way to do a highlight is to take a lot of water on your brush and sort of wipe away or thin out some of what's there. Water basically lets you control opacity with water activated paints and alcohol does the same for alcohol activated paints. The white method and the thinning out method make different kinds of highlights, so experiment and choose them as you see fit. Then this is what I think is the fun part. Cleaning it all up. Cause that's when it starts to come together and it starts looking really snazzy. I'm going back over every single line I made in our outline and I'm taking my time now to make sure that the line is clean, steady, and dark. This is not something that you'll need to do for every look, it might just be a matter of reinforcing your darkest areas, but in this case there's heavy lines which are best to be safe for the end once all your color is where you need it to be. I'm also adding in a lot of extra lines to create the intricacy and movement seen in my reference photos. As you can see, sometimes something as simple as extra lines can really make the look more elaborate, complete, and interesting. If you're using a reference, you'll have a good idea of when to stop, but another learned skill is knowing when to stop when it's your own creation. But that just goes for any makeup look, and it just takes trial and error. Lastly, it helps to know where your makeup will be seen. This kind of look benefits from low-lit scenarios like this one so that you can get the illusion of the eyes being black holes, but if you know that you or your model will be walking around something like a day event, an indoor event that's well lit, or a scene that's well lit, then you'd want to account for that and either choose something else or adjust the look so that it's not dependent on those kinds of factors. It's always good to be one step ahead. But those are some basic tips to help you grow your body painting skills when you're just starting and experimenting. Remember that everyone starts somewhere and it's often just a matter of time and dedication. People will always have things that they naturally excel at and things that they naturally don't, but people most often fail something because they don't try. So stay open-minded, zombies, because sometimes you should just sit down and have some fun. You might learn a thing or two along the way. Yeah, Bag, I heard you like teeth. So we put teeth in your teeth so you can look at teeth while you look at teeth. But I just wrote backwards and upside down, and you're giving me crap. That's not a lot of words she can. <laughs>